This is really small, but it can put out uh, 9.5 BTUs. Its input BTUs is only 10.3, so it's like 92 point something percent efficient. I'm attempting to connect the negative. It's so cold, my fingers don't work. I need, I'm gonna need to go sit in the car and warm up. I'm, I'm doing all this so that I can get my furnace hooked up. It has a, a blower and a circuit board, so it needs the DC power. And I'll do the hot, positive, I mean. Some of these components, so I was going to run all my DC from that box, but I don't know if I can get smaller than 15 amp breakers. And some of these components need to be protected by like three and five amp fuses. So I really can't use that DC box for everything. And I like the blue C stuff. It's really high quality. It is more expensive, but I like it. Okay, I've got a template here. This is where the gas comes in. Um, this is the exhaust outlet. This is the combustion air inlet. And then this is the fresh air intake. And this is the exhaust, I think. So I've got to put it in between the studs or in between the floor joists. So I got a nail hole here and here. I don't, I don't, well, yeah, I guess I could get it right there. exactly the right size. This Advantec is awesome stuff. The surface got discolored, but I mean this stuff is not, it's set out for almost a year and this stuff is not delaminated at all. If you're, if you're building, I would definitely use Advantec, especially if you're building remotely and it's going to sit out. That looks good. That actually came out pretty clean. All right. Okay. I can make this one fit though. Because this hole's bigger for whatever reason. Using the wrong screws. I'm getting confused. Everything's described in millimeters. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go back to the future here. I had a crappy flaring tool and I was batting about 500 in lifetime successful flares on it. That's good for baseball, but it's not so good for gas connections. Well, that tool finally broke, but thankfully I've got some friends in the heating and air industry. So I'm gonna walk over to my buddy's house and we're gonna do a flare connection. So I have it all done when I go down there. The other connection is compression. Uh, I'm just walking like five minutes through my awesome neighborhood. We're going to my friend Dan's house. The trick? That you need to remember when you're doing a flare is 
Well, there's two tricks. One of them is to get the right size fittings. Is that the wrong size fitting? Yeah, and then the other one is to put the um, oh, the no. nut on before you uh, oh, make yeah. the flare. It's three eighths and three eighths. What did I do wrong? It's a uh, different like sizing conventions. Like this is. See, um, yeah, that's okay. So this, something's the wrong size. Yeah. I mean, pick your pick your poison. Either get a new valve or different size tubing. We put a, a 3 8 flare on here and then just slide it into there and maybe pinch it if, if it's sloppy uh, and then just freeze it. Like uh, like when you do a line set? Yeah. Yeah, so we, what, we, what we'll do is we'll just pinch that down and breeze it if we want. And then it's all set. I need to edit a lot out. <laughs> so you just put it in like flush. We're just tool. a little bit proud on the just tool, a proud. and then just gently. And there's your flare. That's such a better tool than I, I used to have one of those. And uh, so we didn't have to remember to put the, the thing because this is just a little test piece. But normally, a new guy at work just did this the other day. Or was it, who was it? Somebody just did this. I don't know if it was a new guy, but you just like made a piece of tubing, cut it and flared it, didn't put any nuts on it. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, it's funny. up really fast. You can see that, like you can see where the solder kind of ran down there, like that means it, it flowed in, it, it pulled in. So that's a nice deep, like well penetrated joint there or whatever. It's like, that'll be really strong. See, now I just gotta wipe, walk home without someone thinking I stole this out of a abandoned <laughs> house. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it for that. So this this goes from British pipe thread to 
3 8 outside diameter. And this is the 24 volt version. I'm pressure testing my gas lines. I lost about a half a PSI when I took the pump off, but it, it seems to be holding pretty steady. I'm gonna let it sit for about a half hour and come back to it. So I did have a leak. Um, I checked everywhere and I use this stuff right here. And what happens is tiny leaks make little bits of foam and big leaks make bubbles. And I had a tiny leak right there. That's what you can, that's what it looks like. And that's not even one of the ones that I did. I just grabbed some old pipe because I needed to go up to three quarters. And then I did have a bigger leak on the flare connection where the copper starts. And so I just turned that down, cranked it a little bit more. I was, I was wary about cranking it too much. So I just went down there. It was making some big bubbles. So I cranked it down a little more, tested it again, the bubbles stopped. So now I'm starting my pressure test over again. Okay, it's been a half hour. It's dark, I'm freezing. Let's check this out. It's exactly where I left it. So we're gonna get the heat turned on just in time. Let's start this thing up. So it purges the air, blows for a while. There's, there's my outlet. I had it blowing right in my bed and it was like getting underneath it and then the heat was rising up and to me it was so nice. And the heat just kicked in. Impressive little thing. Here, here's my propane setup. So I, I built this manifold yesterday. I, I didn't film it just because it was so cold and you would have just seen me fumbling to put together pipes. And so eventually I'm gonna run two 40 pounders. I got one, I, I lifted, it ran all night. I lifted it up this morning, it's still heavy. Um, so I got this manifold, uh, low pressure regulator, high pressure regulator on the tank. Um, I ran that furnace all last night. And then it comes in from outside. This is in, this is in the insulated part of the cabin. Uh, goes goes to, the, to a drip edge and then up into the main part of the cabin. That's gonna serve my stove and my hot water heater. And then it branches off and that's the line that goes over to the furnace. If you haven't seen my other video, this is my water setup. So I got a tank here, um, pump, pressure tank, and then that goes up into the cabin. And it's all drained back so I can I can drain it right here with that valve. And right now it's winterized. Some people were kind of concerned that it's inside, but that's where it's meant to go. Um, it's got all kinds of safety certifications. And, it, and the instructions say that you're, you're supposed to install it with, with copper. I know, I know where I live in the city, you're not allowed to use copper for brass at all. In some places, that's pretty much all they use. Like my brother's house in New Hampshire, all his pipes are uh, copper, his gas pipes. I was kind of having a moment of doubt this morning, wondering why I was doing everything so complicated and, you know, and I kind of, I looked, I looked up and I saw my ceiling and my beams and I kind of felt better about it. Sometimes, you know, it is worth it to take the time to do things exactly how you want, even though, you know, this has been like a four year process. 